Hey everybody from uh, internet land, <coughs> or as George Bush would say, the internets. <coughs> Anyways, <coughs> what I've been uh, looking at, uh, I've been quite excited by what uh, LMAX uh, has been putting out there in the last year or so. Um, now the other thing I really admire about this company, about being an alternative uh, exchange out of obviously London, uh, is their core technology that enables them to uh, basically, um, uh, basically, just do multiple in the millions of throughput of 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 of, of transactions through their exchange. Um, I met with them uh, last week in London at their headquarters. Uh, they walked me through their code. They walked me through uh, their architecture. Uh, what I'm look having you guys look at right now is a video of a presentation from their founder, Martin Thompson, about their uh, new, I shouldn't say new, but um, their, uh, their, their model that they're basing off their technology off of uh, called Disruptor. Um, after a lot of research, this has got me really intrigued in um, rethinking my potential platform, um, being it uh, outside of .NET, Windows, I was quite convinced that things would go well, um, but I just, I'm just putting it out there, this LMAX Disruptor Solution sounds like a, a, a really, um, it, it's so convincing to me that it might be the best way to go, I'm using Java. Um, and uh, some of their uh, techniques that they've used to defeat the garbage collection, which has always obviously been on my mind as a, you know, seven, eight year Java developer. Um, but this, this model seems to have gotten around that uh, using pre-allocated uh, classes or uh, data constructs um, <coughs> with, with uh, using something called a ring buffer. And it's quite ingenious that will minimize the garbage collection so you could obviously use this code base so let me just show you this is the video here at infoq.com presentation LMAX um, and let me just show you the um, Google code uh, pattern the, the project itself so coming under uh, it's Google code um, right here um, now there's a 2.8 so it is fairly updated um, there is a .NET port um, and that's still stuck at, I believe, w version 1. Now, from the research that I've seen, the current version of 2.9, let's say, uh, here, um, obviously the, there, there's been comments of uh, the project being two to three times faster than the original um, project. So that's really, really compelling. And when you watch this video, if you're getting into high-frequency trading, it demos that... Um, However, they've done it is that they've figured ways to get around the um, the latency issues and paralyzation and concurrency issues uh, using it as a core base. Now, that led me to believe you got everything in Java, let's say, um, and then there's two other uh, open source uh, trading projects that I know about that I've been watching for the longest time. There's one called ActiveQuant. Um, ActiveQuant's not really a, a trading platform. What it is, is it seems to be a collection of um, sub-projects. Um, Ulrich, uh, the, the founder behind the project, uh, uh, seems to um, be pushing a lot of uh, the ActiveQuant and all these different uh, sub-projects, so I'm quite interested. The one that really caught my eye was the MATLAB facade in um, this Java, so there, there is some out-of-the-box functionality that you can use to actually get access to MATLAB code, which obviously, once again, <laughs> changes my <coughs> um, perception on, on MATLAB itself with now Java. Um, so that changes that. And then also, um, there's lots of uh, demos and other um, um, connectors here that might be more beneficial than using something like a .NET, using <coughs> the .NET uh, open source trading platform that I would have originally gone with, um, uh, which I still think is phenomenal. Um, but uh, I'm going to show you another trading platform in Java here, one called AlgoTrader. I haven't really played with this one too much. Um, I have looked at it. 
the the whole point is is that it um, is using different types of Java projects, uh, especially something called Esper, um, obviously Hibernate, um, Spring Framework, uh, all the the mainstream um, Java projects that you, that you can um, use and, and work with. Um, but but it, it is getting interesting now, where um, you know obviously MATLAB is still my core analytics project, but it does change the um, dynamics on on where I go with with a trading platform. Um, it opens up a number of options for me, um, and but this this is the one that's really galvanized my um, impressions of Java as a trading platform <coughs> and using this as a base. I think this is now something I'm kind of leaning towards uh, with LMAX um, and uh, talking to the, the, the people over at LMAX um, where they feel that Java is the best way to go um, and when you look at their uh, solutions uh, they're, they're Java, 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 Java um, and uh, they have a pretty strong Java API as well for the, going into the LMAX exchange. So that's something I'm, I'm very interested in. Um, and again, using the disruptor for my own, let's say, infrastructure for high performance capabilities, um, as well as Active Quantum looks good, Algo Trader. So I'm, I'm going to be quite possibly um, experimenting with both these projects as a front end for a trading platform. Um, and obviously using the uh, disruptor as the underlying way to have communication between my different clusters and, 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 and platform uh, components, which will most likely be spread out among different um, servers as I start developing and deploying um, the environment. Now, <coughs> this is getting kind of weird, I know, uh, for those that have been following me for the last six months with uh, the .NET trading platform. Um, I've worked with it. I'm very happy with it. Not to say that there's nothing wrong with it. Um, the only reason I might look into using something like um, the Java um, because of uh, licensing costs with the HPC for Windows. It's not It's not ex exorbitantly expensive, but it is, it, it is pricey. Um, as you know, if you do follow me, there's uh, the set of servers that I'm looking at um, from St Stallard Technologies, um, and the ones that I've picked out, uh, they are fully compatible with uh, CentOS. Um, I've worked in different environments for uh, Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. They only use Red Hat. Now, the nice thing about CentOS, it's true open source, and the best part is, is that it's um, uh, totally... 100% compatible with Red Hat. So that's the nice thing and, and obviously the servers that I want um, is fully compatible with the uh, CentOS 6 which is the current version of Red Hat as well. So it's an enterprise level um, Linux based um, operating system but this is something I'm kind of playing with once I come off my uh, algorithm course and, and start implementing things and start trying to get things up and running. Um, the only thing is, is it's free licensing across the board um, for, for uh, you know, deploying this type of environment and system. Um, now, when it comes back to MATLAB, obviously there's a licensing fee for there, but I've also uh, put up a video of Octave uh, showing that that is another open source trading platform, or open source analytical tool for statistics. It's, it's obviously very limited, but um, with the algorithms that I have, <coughs> um, those algorithms should be fully compatible with the, the Octave if I choose to go down the path of using Octave versus MATLAB itself. But the nice thing is I have the MATLAB um, option if it does do if it does work. So I might play with this for a couple of weeks, see how far I go. Um, as a backup, I will start um, resorting back to my .NET um, Windows-based uh, open source trading platform. So there's going to be a lot of experimentation over the coming weeks to months um, once the algorithms are done all done in uh, MATLAB and or uh, Octave. So that's the plan of action for now, um, but I'm still implementing my um, uh, the uh, course for the algorithms because, as I said, that's where the value is in any HFT environment, and that's what brings the profits and the revenue